Happy Duno. Welcome back. Today I want to rebuild the Razor Leaf. What's the Razor Leaf? The Razor Leaf is the ship that the Mantis flies around in. Who's the Mantis? Well, if you're watching this video, it's likely that you're the Mantis. And have you taken a look at your ship? The Razor Leaf is okay. When the game first came out, this was a easy quest to be made aware of right away at the start of the game. I think a lot of players uh, took the plunge, went and got this suit, became the Mantis, picked up the Razor Leaf. It's got a couple of slick components that make it a little superior than something that you could build on your own. So a lot of players end up in the Razor Leaf. It's a little thing. It's not impressive. But can we make it really impressive? Can we make it look amazing? Fly amazing? Can we give it big fat cargo space and room for a ton of people? In fact, can we turn the Razor Leaf into a Class A adventure cruise vessel? Can we put on the costume, pick up people, and then trap them on the ship while we have pirate battles? Yes. We can put a price tag on that. You better believe it. Yes, we can do all of these things, and I have done them. Would you have a look at this slick ship? It's hard to believe that it's a Class A, but it is. I'd like to show you how fun it is to fly. I'd like to show you generally how it's put together uh, and talk about all the goodies that go into its construction. I hope you like it. It's hard work, but it all pays off in the end. Let's go over the basics here. We've got a lot to cover. So the Razor Leaf, as I've reconfigured it, you can see we have a reactor power level of 34. That is generous. You see it has a crew of 7. The jump range is 20 light years. That's an improvement over the jump range of the ship as it's given to you. Its shield, it says here, 624. And if you look down at the three different weapon systems here, particle, particle, and laser, the particles have numbers like 44 and 69. The laser has a number of 6. And those two weapons, I left them on the ship from the original Razor Leaf. They're one of maybe five pieces that have been kept. Okay. You see, we have a cargo of 2,730. The hull is 903. Uh, and there's fuel numbers is 500. There's 500 units of HE3 hydrazine handy in here. Now, before we get into yanking this thing apart, let's go over the weapons. I think that's critical. Starting with our first bank of weapons. You see they are highlighted at the top of the ship. Those are PB-50 proton beams. Like everything else on the ship, it's Class A. Its range is 3,000 630 so these two big guns have a fire rate of 3.49 and they hit for a truck worth of damage 22.04 hull and shield they have a max power listed of eight that's two four power guns uh, firing as a twin pair Next up, we have Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors. These weapons are only available after you perform the absolute bare minimum UC Vanguard basic starter questing. You don't have to complete it. It's a long quest tree. But you ought to start it. You ought to start enough of it to get these nice guns. But if you can't put these guns on, there are other guns with a power of two apiece. But that's why I went with these. Because we need people to walk up to this ship and say something to the effect of, 
that's the razor leaf. And it's easier to sell that if it is bristling with powerful cannons that look like they are military grade because they are. Also, that's why they're mounted on the bottom. I wanted to make sure that when a person walked up to this ship, they would see them right away. And that would help them to believe that this is the configuration with which the Mantis has fought crime and become such a legend. You're the Mantis! They have a range of 3630. That's quite long. Uh, of course, another Class A weapon. Their fire rate is 6.65. So while they do 11.54 damage, uh, there are six of them. And as you can see down there, we're filling the entire power allocation for the second weapon slot at 12 because there are six of them. They each require two power. Like I said before, I've left one set of weapons from the Razor Leaf's original configuration, and that's these. A pair of Flare Dash P 15 megawatt infrared pulse lasers. Again, another Class A device. This one has a range of 1512 and a half. Its fire rate is 6.65. Its hull damage is a miserable 3.14. Its shield damage is an okay 10.5. Uh, you can see powering that those two weapons, they take three power apiece for a total of six. I feel like I, I don't have to tell you that I don't very often power those weapons. Uh, I think they're there for looks. I think they're there just in case some nerd shows up and knows so much about the Mantis they would say, Yeah, but that can't be the Razor Leaf because it doesn't have the 15 megawatt infrared pulse lasers. And we can't have that. So they are front and center where they can be seen easily by anybody getting into the ship. Just like the big guns on, hanging off the top. <laughs> so there are four motors on the bottom of the ship, and there is one motor on the back of the uh, main mast posting that leads to the upper area. As a group, we provide a, I think the mobility is 61. It's not bad. I like looting ships. I don't want to not have to loot ships because my cargo hold is 240 or some silly number like that. No. So, this ship has a pair of chonky cargo containers and that brings its mobility down. It's above 60. I think it's nice. Another holdover from the original configuration of the Razor Leaf is its shield. The shield on this ship is the Bastille S81 shield generator. Again, with them Class A parts, because this is a Class A ship, its max power is only 6, and while it only has a shield health basic of 390, its regen rate is 10%. That's nice. So, there might not be an awful lot of shield to stop somebody from pounding into the hull of the ship. But as long as you can deal with things as they pop up, you're going to look down and find that your shields are replenishing pretty quickly. So, maybe more could have been spent to upgrade that. Okay. We're going to polish off the top plate with the Alpha Grab Drive R-4000 by Relodyne. Uh, Class A grab drive with a max power of 9 and if you remember my previous video you know I like to power these things low as far as I'm concerned power of 1 on this thing grab drum thrust is 27 grab drive health is 95 well it's a grab drive you need one of those if you want to take off with the ship so we <laughs> have one I did upgrade it, by the way. I upgraded it because I wanted a longer jump distance. I think the Razor Leaf started out with like a 15.8 jump range, and that's a bit tight. There are places you may not be able to get quite to because of that range limitation. We can't have that. Uh, we're doing 
we're doing heroic adventure cruises here. We need to be able to go where, where the crap is. So, the reactor for this ship, a Spheromac DC-202 reactor by Deepcore. It's a Class A with 33 power generation. A nice healthy repair rate of 2.25, a reactor health of 45, which I think is a little bit low. Hull of 730, and it takes a crew of one just to operate the thing. So, that's that. That's where we're getting all that power from. Alright. We return to the build menu. We're going to pull this ship apart. And just like with the Sunnyside Gub, we have a single hab this time with additional side jibbles. We're going to grab those pieces. We're going to pull them out from the center of the ship. Well, we're going to try. All right. And with that out, just like with the gub, and with any of the guppies that I make, the Sunnyside gub or more, we double-click the top once it's been unmarried from the lower part of the ship, we can take the whole thing right off. Easy as you please. Now that's nice. So now we get a chance to take a look at this new razor leaf with its bits separated. You can see up here at the top we got the classic Nova Docker. Oh yeah, this is fun. I thought it was swell. The lower part of the ship is so nice looking. It's got such good lines. Really exciting. I just wanted to take a quick peek at what this ship would look like without its guppy hat on top. After all, with just those two parts changed, that lower ship is ready to work. We could, <clears throat> we could easily find room for all those weapons on the bottom of the ship. But we undid that. Nice distraction. So. Okay, we've got a lot to unpack about the bottom of this ship. But the first thing we ought to do is take the back end off. It's entirely structure. If we look, we can see it is a Stroud engine mount on the top. That's a Tayo Spine A directly beneath it. It is attached to a Nova Cowling upside down, the 2L-BA, and that allows that particular piece and the piece next to it to attach to the Nova Bracer on the end of the Stroud Eklund engine mount. That's all married up to a Demos Tail A, and then there's a little bit of a Demos Spine A, the four spine, the little poker tooth part, and that ties the whole thing together. Well, now we've collected it all and moved it off the ship. And it's worth noting that entire thing is unnecessary. So that too could be removed, leaving us with an even more tidy ship. Just like that. Okay, we've got some Nova cowling up at the top there. Again, we're making use of the 2L-TA cowling and those are attached to some Nova engine struts. The bulbous bits on the sides, those are Tayo caps, both uh, there's port, starboard, fore and aft pieces in use here. The little uh, tapering back plate that feeds up to the helium tank, that's a Nova cowling 1L-PA. We can grab all those bits. We'll grab them from both sides of the ship this time. And we can just pop all that off. 
panels over to the other side. So with those panels off, see, we're going to grab the forward landing gear, and we're going to grab these Hope Tech panels. Let's go over those parts as well. And, you know, I think this ship only has three total landing gear. And that's pretty crazy when you consider how much ship there is to land. You'd think it'd need more feet, but it does not. And we'll go over why. The NG-20 landing gear. Wide. It's four mass, four hull, and a lander thrust of four. So there's eight total landing thrusts with these two Nova landers alone. That's why it only has three total sets of gear, because these brunt landers are sweet. Now they require Starship Design Rank 2 to build. So we can pop those off along with the Hope Tech nose pieces. Ah, let's go ahead and remove this third landing piece that again has a lander thrust of four and a weight of four, hull of four, so a uh, mass of four. And now for some reason I think I'm grabbing the three landing gear, you see, but I'm, but I'm not. I'm actually grabbing two additional one by one uh, by one um, Nova halves. Those are in there to connect the sides of the hab. Hey, that's all out of the way. And now we can take a look at the engines. There's our Ares DT60s. We've got four. The inner Ares engines are mounted to the reactor. The outer Ares engines are mounted to those halves that are stretching backwards. That's why they're there. The top motor is mounted on top of the grab drive. So the whole thing slips out in one neat, tidy package, just like that. Well, we can get the helium tanks off, and we'll drag them back just like that. So, I think I'm done. I'm not, but I'm going to forget to move those Tayo uh, side plates, bumper plates, off the sides of the hab in the middle, and I'm going to forget the uh, Demos uh, nose piece, which is underneath the bridge. Alright, so we're moving to the top of the ship now, and we're going to grab these little baby cakes cargo packs. Uh, one of them is original from the Razor Leaf. The other one I added for uh, symmetry. Because I like the way they finish up the shaping behind these uh, intake sucker things. On the top, we've got Nova Cowling uh, sides and top. These are Hope Tech caps. And that's a Hope Tech radiator. These are Demos pieces. Demos wings, these nice thin things. The six obliterator guns are mounted to the bottom of those for easy viewing so that people can see them nicely. And we can pop this whole thing off. So the four weapon, the top cannon, and the six side weapons are all mounted to this front piece. So now, we can get head back to the back of the boat and we'll grab all of the rear-facing structural elements. So we've got a uh, Nova Cowling, we've got Demos Spinework, and Stroud Eklund Cap A. There, all off the ship. So last, we will grab these pair of 30-ton sextant cargo containers, which I use because they really smooth the shape from hab to those uh, Stroud caps. Their mass is 212 a piece, right? So adding these two, that's 424 additional mass from just the cargo. That's why when you add cargo, you make a dramatic impact on your ship's ability to move around. With everything pulled apart, Looks like we better make a little room. There we go. We can scoop this thing up a little bit. 
put our mast hab, the Nova hab, in the middle there. And then we can mount the guppy section back on top of the mast hab. I always like to put something there to align it. In this case, it is the docker, the Nova docker on top. It should line up with the mast. And there we go. Now we can get a look at the various elements have works, landing bay. Uh, you see on the sides of the bottom of the ship, we've got Tayo all-in-one berths on the bottom for the curviness, and on the top we've got the Demos two by one uh, because they look neater. Mm, finally, we'll get those we'll get those Tayo side plates off, but we're, we're never going to remember that bit of Demos have work underneath the cockpit. So, in order to save space, I've used two of these, well, in order to save mass while increasing space, I have used a pair of big honking mess halls, one from Demos on the top because of the hard, flat nature of the top of the ship I wanted to go for, and on the bottom I went with the Nova because it's roundier and the one at the bottom of the ship to look all, you know, bulbous. Mounted to that NG2 docker, super lightweight. We've got the control station, uh, Nova in the front, and Demos in the back. It's Nova in the front because the ship is just about as long as you can possibly make it. If you add one of those little Hope Tech bumpers, it's too long. So I needed a front that had a little bit of roundiness to it in order to finish up without being able to put anything on the front of the ship. Not even a window. <laughs> and at the back of the ship is the captain's quarters, which, while serving no overt purpose, it's the razor leaf. Perish the thought of it having no captain's quarters. That's insane. Of course it has captain quarters. I did the math, the basic head math, uh, 139 mass for all of the hab work. And that includes the docker and the uh, landing bay, and the bridge, and it includes those two one-by-one uh, -one companionways that I tugged off and forgot all about. Uh, so, 139 in mass for all of this, for room for passing travenger, <laughs> accommodations for traveling passengers, <laughs> a significant amount of Births, locations for them to relax, to enjoy each other's company, to talk about the incredible adventures that they're going on. So the idea is that we've got a one-by-one -one, uh, Demos companion way. There's actually two of them, one on top of the other. Uh, and that's just the ladder. You know, the ladder from the previous ship. This one's got one, too. It's also excellent. But, again, the Demos uh, bridge feeds into the back behind it. So it's going to feed into the same giant tower ladder that feeds all the way up to the top. Um, it's going down and into the side halves that skirt the vehicle that are going to be like a, a place you probably don't go. <laughs> Ooh, wait, there's one more thing I wanted to cover. The DS... 40-2 Area Bridge by Demos. It has a mass of 30 and requires rank 3 starship design, but it offers a cargo of 360 and it has 8 crew stations. 8. 8. That's awesome. That is a really nice bridge and i think when you see the interior you're gonna agree with me it is the right choice and again if that mantis nerd shows up and says i know for a fact that the razor leaf uses a demos bridge well there it is there's your demos bridge right there little kit get on board well i think it's time we control z our way back to a one piece ship Uh, 
and do some of our moving around here. There we go. The cargo containers are moving back to the back of the boat. There we go. The back structural components have been reattached to the top of the gup. The front structural clips back on. Along with those guns. It's a good look. The shield on this thing is the original from the Razor Leaf. I think I've mentioned that before. I could, should, would upgrade it, but we've spoken before about those super fans. Uh, an air of legitimacy would not go amiss. All right. Let's put those motors back into the back of the bottom of the guppy. Let's put our back landing gear back into place. Our forward landing gear plug back in. We're going to put the side structural components back over the plumpness. Yes, look at that plumpness. Okay. Now we can reattach the tail. Bang. And now that she is cutting quite a line, let's put our tub top back. And let's remarry it with the central mast. And she is back in one piece. The mobility is 61. You see, it's not 100. <laughs> its mass is 1491. Its shield listed here is 390. <laughs> the warning is to reduce mass to increase the ship maneuverability. But I think you'll see it's maneuverable. It's plenty maneuverable. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what I've done with the Razor Leaf. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I hope this has inspired you. I hope in some way it has affected or enriched the way that you enjoy this fine video game Starfield. I've been a Fallout fan since the very first game, so I remember when Fallout 3 first came out and you couldn't shake a stick without getting it covered in people's angry opinions on how Bethesda had just absolutely phoned it in and ruined everything forever and look at this backlash from the community and the dedicated fan base and all this stuff it was rough because i bought fallout 3 on release i bought the fancy edition i was so excited to get another fallout game Woo! i got a delightful video game out of it fallout 3 was really cool and a lot of those folks miserable experiences were miserable because they were miserable and then just had experiences and and it wasn't playing fallout 3 that made them miserable with that uh i'm gonna close out here's hoping there's some space battles behind me um and a teeny tiny preview of the next video Woo! where we get to level 60 where we tickle the build limit and where we experiment with the idea of uh, not putting anything on the ship at the spot where the bad guys aim, if you know what I mean.